You, would you say that upstream from all this discussion about the Muslim presence and this Islam as being the religion of the other is in fact just a way to create from within the society a new way to a new narrative, our nation, who we are uh, as different, who we, who we are not and who we are not are the Muslims? Yeah, I think that's partly it. I mean, if you think about what's happened with Obama, hmm. um, how much he's been accused of being a crypto Muslim. Yeah. And there was a scene, I don't know if you saw this, where this um, woman came up to the early, you know, the Tea Party saying, I want my country back. Now, you know, leaving... And he's so, now... He's the he's president, now, yeah. He was the president of the United States. Yeah, yeah. So the idea that Muslims are actually on the body of Muslims, you're inscribing the decline of the West in its position in the world. Hmm. And that's all the, all the attacks on multiculturalism, all the attacks on Muslims come down to this central narrative. Once upon a time, Europe, the West, however you want to call it, was the center of the planet. Hmm. It was unquestionably the center of the planet. Hmm. And the fact is that the Muslims are the largest significant population which no longer take seriously the claims of Western superiority because every day they're reminded of its limits yeah. constantly. Yes. Partly when, because it, when it comes to the values, values, to values, the rights, to yeah, the, you the know, values equality. Which, yeah, yeah. If you want to ask Muslims, you know, the values are like t-shirt slogans, they're mm. not practices. Mm. You can't have, you have the rule of law, they talk about the rule of law, but in practice you see many other things. Yeah. Yeah. Guantanamo is a very good example of that. Mm. It's not that, you know, the compa when you criticize what happened in Guantanamo, what's happening in Guantanamo, the argument is always made, well, Saddam is worse, or the yeah. Syrians were worse, or whoever the Muslim dictatorships are worse. Mm. But that's not the claim that the West ever made. The mm. claim was never that we are better than the Ba'athists, mm. murderers, we are better than the torturers yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was that we are better. Mm. And the point is that for Muslims are constantly being reminded. In that sense, the experience... So they can witness first yeah, witness that there the is a contradiction. The contradiction. Between, yeah. And in that sense, the Muslim experience isn't that different from the African-American experience during the civil rights movement, hmm. when what the claims were made for the American constitution were belied in everyday practice. Hmm. And it wasn't that you became politicized or conscious. You had no choice. The, 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 problem is, the problem is that I'm not sure that the Muslims themselves are aware that they are part of this history, uh, uh, historical experience. For example, even in the States today, you have the immigrants some of them are buying the American dream, mm. while the African-American Muslims are saying, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it's not the point. Mm. This is not the point. The point in this country is about discrimination, it's about whiteness and blackness. Mm. Yeah. It's a long history of discrimination. Come to the values mm. and the discre discrepancy between mm. the two. Mm. So now if we want to go to solutions, because mm. at the end of the day, it's, it's just a what you are saying, and, and, and it's visible, and it's understandable at the grassroots level. It's a revealing process. Mm. It's revealing not only what, how Islam is perceived, but also the self-perception of the West as to its uh, 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 um, position in the world, uh, culturally, politically, economically speaking, mm. uh, in, even in what is uh, happening now in the Middle East, there yes. is something which is a shift, it's mm. clear. Yeah. Now, what should be uh, the way forward? How could we move on to, to, to change this perception and, and to come to a better understanding, or at least uh, a better uh, implementation of, of the, the, the rules that we are uh, and the values that we are claiming? I think we should be very cautious as Muslim groups of being the therapists for the West. That's not our role. That's not, we can do that. Mm. Um, what that means for us is that I think uh, it's partly we have to give up on the project that if they knew more about us, they will necessarily love us more or they'll mm. like us more because that's not what it really is about. Mm. I think partly the educative It's element, not about knowledge, mutual knowledge. No, knowledge it's about doesn't, what? Power? Uh, it's, it's, it's ultimately a, it's a degree of power, but it's nothing more than that. I think it's a question of that um, being able to say, look, you have your own problems, we have our own problems, we can meet halfway to try and sort them. But who is this we and you? For I example, think, if you talk to me mm. and I'm saying, okay, look, I'm a Muslim, but I'm a European. Mm -hmm. Am I right or am I wrong, according to the, 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 your perception? Well, I mean, the, 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 I can have that conversation with you, but I mean, the thing is that, <laughs> no, but the example, point is, when you say well, you have, you have your pen. problem and you have ours, no, I think as a the, European oh, I think Muslim. there's two things. There's two yeah. things here. I think, firstly, there is no doubt that you have to accept that there is something called Muslim, yeah. and that has a certain kind of singularity. For example, mm. a lot of the time when you're criticized, you're criticized for making interventions, which within the Muslim kind of heritage seem very kind of... Um, applicable, very important, etc. Mm. But then they always consider to be appeasement or something like that for worst kinds of things, right? Mm. Because there's a sort of recognition, there's a 
no recognition of the historicity of our own heritage in that sense. So mm. being a Muslim means being part of a conversation mm. with other Muslims yeah. who call themselves Muslims, and I yes. leave it like that. Mm. Now that doesn't mean that you, when you say to me, am I a European, you can also be part of a conversation about Europeans. Yes. But I don't think, for example, European, I'm not a Catholic, so I don't have a much, I may have an opinion about the fallibility of the Pope, but it doesn't really have any significance. That mm. is something for the Catholics yeah. community to sort out. Similarly, there are many issues about Muslims, which I think are, can only be resolved among conversations about Muslims. I mm. can't take it very seriously with conversations uh, which but others have. What, then, what about Muslims living in the West, that I call Western Muslims, dealing with a negative image and discrimination and Islamophobia? What should they do? Well, very short it's, not, it's not solving the problem no. of the other, it's solving no, their own problem. This is what I think yeah. that our short, the very short, and I think to some extent moves have already been made. And I mm. think the main thing for us to do is to become more politically aware, to be more politically participatory, to be more mobilized. And those things have been happening. They're happening almost de facto because you're forced into this kind of compulsory consciousness. Yeah. Mm. There is no, I mean in Britain, and I don't know the situation of the societies, but the most active political societies on student unions, now one of them is the ISOC, the Muslim mm. Islamic societies all yeah. over. Yeah. Partly is because the experience of being a Muslim, because it becomes harder, because of you the pressure, because yes, of the pressure yeah. then you have to be quite firm and you have to think about it. Hmm. You have to think about it much more. And Muslims are asked constantly to reflect upon themselves, to explain themselves. So we have almost this kind of process of creative but, re rethinking going on. Yes. And but, I think that is something we need to encourage. Yes, that's, that's very important. The only problem here is that because of the pressure, as you said, this is pushing the Muslims to be much more active and sometimes creative in, any, in all the, the channels and the ways that they can find solutions. The problem is that very often, and we can see this in the States or in European countries or even in Australia, in that uh, uh, it's very much a reactive attitude. So, so we are on the defensive and we react. We are creative out of defensiveness. Is this the way forward? I think that is true of Muslim minorities in the West. I don't think it's necessarily true of the Muslim Ummah. And one thing I yes, think... Yes, I'm talking, I'm talking yes, about the West. Yes. yes, but I think those two things, I think it's important. One thing that I think we can do is not allow ourselves to be corralled into these kind of national spaces. I think that's very, okay. very important. Mm -hmm. And one of the things... To look beyond. To look that. beyond that. Because, mm -hmm. And I think that is what gives us our um, strength and possibilities of transformation. Mm -hmm. What we are always being told is that we are minorities and we should behave as minorities. Mm -hmm. But when the roles that we're given for minorities is very, very limited. Yeah. We should not have any say in, uh, in, in foreign policy. We should mm -hmm. not be able to hold democratic governments accountable and take seriously their claims of democracy. Mm -hmm. I think we should do all of those things. But we should also remember that the question of well, whether you're a minority or majority depends how you do the counting. And mm. I think that's important. So in a sense for Muslims, I think there are two things that are really important. One, that we recognize that all these pressures are there, but we recognize that there is some sense of um, transnational conversations. I certainly think that's important. Um, and I think secondly, to, for us to be, have the confidence to start articulating a better world for everyone, not just ourselves, but for everyone. So a kind of a vision for yes, all. Yes, a vision for all. I yeah. mean, say that, look, we do our things, you want to come with us, fine. And, you know, we'll have that conversation. Mm -hmm. I think the trap for us is that we get caught up, like you said, being defensive and apologizing mm -hmm. for what we are not, mm -hmm. because that process will never end, and for constantly having to explain ourselves in things that we don't really are not that important to us. But quite quickly, uh, uh, don't you think that if you have to assess the situation now after two or three generations, even more in some countries of Muslim presence yeah. in the West, yeah. that there is a lack of such a vision for the future? Is that the transnational dimension of our presence and the vision that we are here, but we are also connected to what is happening in, in, in southern countries, mm. in Muslim majority mm. countries. Do you think that, the f that this is somewhere here in the Muslim awareness oh, and I the Western countries? So. I'm less pessimistic than many Muslims are. Mm. I think we, our demands are very high. We want unity when we actually mean uni and we want to be unanimously. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you look, give you a very simple example and I'll finish this very quickly, is this that you go anywhere in the United States and you look at the narrative of the Palestinian conflict, yeah. you'll get the Zionist version. Hmm. You get anywhere in the Muslim world, you'll get an anti-Zionist version, more or less, is, part is of the common sense. Is it not pal the Palestinian conflict the easiest one to get unity? But I don't think, I think that's a metaphor. Why should people in Indonesia okay. hmm. care about what's happening in Gaza? I mean, realistically, but they it's do. It's just showing something, yeah. yes. Uh, Palestine is a metaphor for the Muslim condition, and that's hmm. how Muslims understand it. Hmm. And I think that is a connection. If you can read yourself, regardless of where you are, 
through that, then I think it tells you something about yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much for your remark. I think that during this discussion, we have been first able to say that, uh, or at least to assess the situation, understanding that what is happening in the West is not only because of the Muslim presence, it's beyond that. It's something which has to do with an identity crisis within the West and its place in uh, the world today, the economic order, the political power. These are, uh, this is a revealing process with the Muslims being there. And, and being involved in all this discussion, something that you said which is important, is that for the Muslims to be able to look at themselves, their tradition, where they are coming from, all the values that they are uh, 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 respecting, and also to be able, beyond the national discussions, to look beyond that and to understand that it's a transnational phenomenon which has to do with the West, but all beyond the West, with Muslim-majority countries, and this is where it's important for the Muslim concern. And you ended with something which is a more optimistic take, is that something is happening, and it's not uh, just now that we can see it. It's a historical process for now and for the future. That, well, that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows you have seen, and here is the way to contact us. We'd like to hear your views on today's show, as well as ideas for future programmes. You can do this by emailing us at islamandlife at presstv.co.uk. You can also join our Facebook page by searching Islam and Life on Press TV, where you can view past programmes, keep up to date on future shows, leave comments and meet other Islam and Life fans. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Dr. Salman Sayed. Thank you so much for your input and your views, and I hope to see you next week, inshallah.